On March 19, 2020, the TurboGrafx-16 will see a long-awaited return to the retail setting. Originally released in 1987 in Japan, and then North America in 1989, it hasn't been commercially available as a new product since 1994. It was known as the PC Engine in Japan, where it was more successful and had a much larger library of games. Some of you may have noticed that this new TurboGrafx-16 Mini is being released by Konami. This is because Konami became the majority shareholder in Hudson Soft, the original owner of the PC Engine IP, in the early 2000s, ultimately absorbing the entire company and their games in 2012. The TurboGrafx-16 Mini will see a worldwide release on March 19th, with a Core Graphics Mini coming to Europe and a PC Engine Mini coming to Asian regions. In this episode, we will be going over the entire game list that will be available on the machine at launch. This list is comprised of both North American and Japanese variants, and there are over 50 of them to cover. Let's get started. Air Zonk is a horizontal shoot 'em up featuring great graphics and sound. Zonk here would actually become the platform's official mascot, and this game saw a sequel as well. This is the North American localization of the game, which was censored in numerous ways from the original PC Engine release. All Dines is a horizontal shooter that was designed to show off the new capabilities of the Super Graphics, an upgraded PC Engine variant that was released only in Japan. It's a decent game, but there are other games on the vanilla PC Engine that look and play better. Alien Crush is a compiled developed pinball game that was quite popular for its sci-fi theme in multiple screens. It also happens to play great. This one is a very Japanese croquet game. Lots of Japanese text and a computer AI that will hand you your ass. Blazing Lasers was one of the premier vertical shoot 'em ups on the TurboGrafx-16 early on. It was developed by Compile and holds up rather well even all these years later. It's a solid package with great visuals and sound, and I love the power-ups. Yep, the TurboGrafx-16 had its own Bomberman games, and Bomberman 93 here is a five-player story-based entry that plays just as well as you remember. Bomberman 94 was only released physically on the Japanese PC Engine back in the day, but it was this content that went on to form the basis of the Genesis version of Mega Bomberman. More multiplayer goodness for you and your friends. Bomberman Panic Bomber is a different take on the classic gameplay. It's now more of a puzzle game as opposed to the action you are used to. It was originally a PC Engine CD game, only seeing release in Japan for the platform. The original Caveman mascot shows up to represent once again. Massive sprites, tons of color, and a great soundtrack round out this unforgettable classic. I even like the way it played. Mm -hmm. 
we also get the sequel Bonk's Revenge. More colorful and lighthearted action awaits. If you like the first game, this is more of the stuff you love there. Great for kids thanks to the easy to pick up play mechanics. We also get the TurboGrafx-16 version of the Taito Arcade classic, Kadash. This platformer combines some light RPG elements to the mix, and also has some great graphics and sound. Pick your class and grab a friend for multiplayer. This is one of Working Design's first games I'd ever played, and it still holds up quite well today. Back then, a Castlevania on your system usually meant that you were getting a great game. Rondo of Blood here wasn't just great, it was one of the best 16-bit games ever made. Multiple characters to play, different routes to take, and incredible sound and graphics all make this game still a treat to play. If you still haven't played this classic, now's your chance. Two Man Fu is a strange multiplayer action puzzle game where you must move colored balls, which double as weapons, to like colored tiles. It's simple but quite playable. We are also getting China Warrior, or what was known as the Kung Fu in Japan. You walk left to right in auto-scrolling stages defeating everything from sticks and birds to monks and rocks. Each stage ends in a one-on-one -on -one fight with a boss character. Many hate this game, but I have fond memories of its huge characters and great music. Choa Nikki, or Super Big Brother if you prefer, was a very happy shoot 'em up for the PC Engine CD. The evil Emperor Bill invades your home in his quest for more protein. Can you stop his plans for world domination? Hi. I'm sure many of you remember the great Namco developed Dragon Spirit. In this vertically scrolling shooter, you take control of a dragon and must rescue a princess from an evil demon. It was one of the better ports at the time. Dungeon Explorer is a multiplayer hack and slash adventure game that has various classes of characters to play as. This is actually quite fun if you appreciate these types of games, though it won't win any awards for its simple presentation. We also are getting some Sega goodness on the Mini, starting with the classic multi-directional shooter, Fantasy Zone. This turned out quite good on the system, particularly the presentation, which mimics the arcade really well. It's a faithful port that you should give a shot. Galaga 88, actually known as Galaga 90 on the United States TurboGrafx-16, is a port of the classic Namco arcade game. This is one of the few video games that I was able to bond with my father over. It's simple, but looks, sounds, and plays so good. If you appreciate the pick-up-and-play nature of classic arcade games, this is a winner for sure. Genpei Tomoden is a side-scrolling action game that puts you in mind of stuff like Ninja Spirit. It's based on Namco's arcade game, and looks more like an 8-bit NES title than a PC Engine game. It's okay, but I can't say I'd spend much time with it.
We also get the popular super graphics version of Daimok Aimora, or Ghouls and Ghosts in the West. This one was released after the Genesis version, in a larger cartridge, making it one of the better versions of the game for that era. It's still challenging as all get out, but represents the arcade quite well. Konami also saw fit to include the popular arcade card shoot 'em up, Sapphire. This expensive as all get out gem has some incredible graphics and animation. The music ain't bad either. Many of you likely haven't played this yet, so it does come highly recommended. We also get Gradius and Gradius 2 here. Both of these games were based on the classic arcade games of the same name, and were excellent ports all the way around. I always dug the power-up system and unique stage design. Well worth a look if you like shoot 'em ups I bought JJ and Jeff in the bargain bin when I was a kid. I hated JJ and Jeff. I wanted to return JJ and Jeff. The store wouldn't take back JJ and Jeff. I still have JJ and Jeff. Necromancer is an RPG that was originally released only in Japan. The game is untranslated here and is heavy in Japanese text. The Beast TurboGrafx-16 Super CD Shoot'em Up Lords of Thunder is here, and so is its kick-ass, truly fantastic soundtrack. You're gonna play this because it's a damn good shooter, but you'll return for the music that just makes everything so much better. Military Madness is a turn-based strategy game that was known as Nectaris in Japan. It has hours upon hours of gameplay packed into it, and is quite similar to other games like Iron Storm on the Saturn. Moto Rotor is a top-down racing game that features up to five players simultaneously. I could never get into it, but those that appreciate it the likes of the Micro Machines racing games may find some enjoyment here. Like most other companies back then, the TurboGrafx-16 had its Zelda clone, and it was called Newtopia. Don't let that term clone fool you into thinking this is something to be ignored, however. This is a fantastic game start to finish, and we get its sequel here as well. Both of these will give you tons of gameplay, and are two of the best games on the platform. Did you enjoy the exploits of one Master Higgins on the NES? Well, you should love the much better looking New Adventure Island here. It plays the same and should make fans of the original quite happy. We are also getting the Japanese PC Engine version of Ninja Gaiden. This was based on the NES port of the game, 
though it has notable differences in story, visual, sound, and gameplay. It's familiar yet different, and still well worth a play. Also included is the great Irem action platformer Ninja Spirit. It looks and sounds great, is challenging, and is a solid representation of the arcade original. I lost the controller to a rage quit over this one, but I don't hold any grudges against it. The great multiplayer Taito game Parasol Stars was originally localized by working designs for the TurboGrafx-16. Few games you will ever see will look so basic and yet be so deep. Armed with your umbrella-like parasol, your job is simple. Clear out the bad guys before the time runs out. It's an absolute blast. You may have noticed by now that I like golf video games. Power Golf here is... okay. It doesn't do anything terrible, but it doesn't do anything particularly great either. It's a good rainy day title to mess around with, but you likely won't return to it very often. The horizontal shooter Psychosis is here as well. Developed by Naxet, the goal here is to destroy the entity that is trying to take control of your mind. I didn't care for this much back in the day, but it has grown on me over the years. It's kind of plain, but not too bad at all. All of you know our type. The TurboGrafx-16 port here was a fantastic representation of the game, particularly since only a handful of consoles saw a version of it. In the US where microcomputers weren't as popular, most of us had a choice of this and the Sega Master System version, and in that light, she was a beauty. Salamander is a port of the original shoot-'em-up arcade game by Konami. It was known as Life Force in the US, and has a look and feel similar to the Gradius games. This is the only game on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini that isn't on the Japanese version of the PC Engine Mini in any form. Did you like Musha on the Genesis? You know, giant robot shoot 'em ups with great graphics and cinemas? Well, here is Spriggan, a game very similar in every way. It was done by Compile and is one of the most challenging games on the list here. We also get the incredible PC Engine version of Snatcher, the cyberpunk thriller that features a great story and fantastic graphics and sound. But before you go selling that Sega CD version for crazy money, be aware that this is untranslated and is completely in Japanese. It is exceptionally heavy in both spoken and Japanese text and will likely be unplayable to many of you. Soldier Blade is a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up that is pretty good. It has a solid look and feel, and is one of the easier games to pick up and play without being crushed under some ridiculous difficulty. It's balanced well, and a great game to play with your kids. We also get the TurboGrafx-16 version of the Sega Classic Space Harrier. 
This game was not an easy one to bring home in 1988, yet this version stands out as one of the better console ports. It's slower, not as smooth, and doesn't sound as great, but is still a good representation of a much more powerful arcade game. Namco released Splatterhouse in the arcades in 1988, and less than two years later we received an absolutely incredible port of it on the TurboGrafx-16. Graphics, sound, gameplay, it all represents the source quite faithfully, and only changes a handful of things here and there. It's one of my favorites on the system. <laughs> Compile was back with Spriggan Mark II, a PC Engine CD game that was quite different from the first. This one is heavily mecha themed and scrolls horizontally. It's cinema heavy and has some major pacing issues, but is otherwise an okay game. This PC Engine CD was supposed to be called Fantasy Star Soldier in the US, but was cancelled before it was released. It's pretty much a cuter version of Star Soldier, and is designed very similar overall. Super Darius is a PC Engine CD port of the arcade game by Taito. It's mercilessly difficult, but a good overall representation of the original. This board game was kind of like the Japanese version of Monopoly, where your goal is to acquire wealth through buying properties and other business transactions. It was insanely popular in Japan for a while, and spawned a number of versions. But unfortunately, the PC Engine game here is not translated. That means unless you can read Japanese, you likely won't be touching much of this one at all. Super Star Soldier shows up as well. I always found the Kaneko developed stuff fun, but never really top tier. Yet Super Star Soldier is one of my favorite shooters on the platform. It has a great pace, a bunch of power-ups, and the graphics and sound hold up extremely well. Like the better shooters on the TurboGrafx-16, it also doesn't completely overwhelm you early on, and allows you to get a feel for the action. It's good stuff. Valkyrie no Densetsu is a top-down action-adventure game with lots of RPG elements. The bulk of the gameplay revolves around killing enemies and collecting things, but there is a heavy focus on story and character interaction. I have not heard if this is being translated, but my guess is no. Do you like games like Hang On and Outrun? Then Victory Run might be for you. Decent graphics, a smooth frame rate, and gameplay that doesn't great make this a good one to waste away an afternoon or two. The fantastic East Book 1 and 2 is here, which includes both the US and Japanese versions. Tons of great cinemas, an epic story, and some of the best music in an RPG ever. The action-oriented gameplay will take some getting used to for many of you, but this is well worth the effort to play. It was one of the first games I played on the CD platform, and I still remember how impressed I was with it.
whenever these releases come out, there are always missing games you really wanted. If I had my pick of things, I would have added Legendary Axe, the action platformer by Victor Interactive Software. I love the visuals and music in this one, and it was really challenging. It was the kind of game that made you proud to be a TurboGrafx-16 owner back then, and it would have been great to have here. I also really would have loved Gate of Thunder, another shoot 'em up with a really booming and excellent metal soundtrack. It also looked phenomenal. With the US version of Magical Chase being so rare, I would have loved to have seen that on here as well. I would have liked it even more if the US and Japanese versions were available together, as they both have some pretty big differences from one another. Finally, I think the biggest omission here is the exclusion of Street Fighter II Champion Edition. I mean, there is another Capcom game on the list here, so Konami was not averse to working with Capcom. The PC Engine version is a very good port of the game, and would have given Konami a chance to sell a 6-button controller for it, though it's still quite playable with just two. So there we go guys, some 50 plus games that will be available on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini in March. Konami going after the guys over at M2 to take care of this was a really good idea I feel, and hopefully the emulation will be up to snuff for a good experience. Perhaps if this sells well enough, we will see a Turbo Duo Mini with even more great games down the road. If $100 is too expensive for you, but you found some of the games I covered interesting, there are great options out there to play some of them on other systems. For those that plan on getting one of the mini releases here, be aware that it only comes with one controller, though there will be separate pads available. If you want to play multiplayer games that feature 3 to 5 players, you will need a TurboTap accessory to do it, which is likewise available separately. Finally, while the system does come with a USB power cord, it does not ship with a USB power adapter. You will need to use one that you already own, or the official one that is sold separately. The Turbo Graphics Mini, PC Engine Mini, and Core Graphics Mini are all available for pre-order, and they all hit worldwide together on March 19th. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.